is Kitty Anderson again. I'm a board certified menopause coach. I have been studying menopause for about five years and coaching since 2017. It's 2022 and I am doing an update to your initial HRT appointment guide. So you can get this free guide by emailing me at jumpstartaip at gmail.com. And if you know me well, you know that I am a fanatic on brain health. I was able to move my brain health way high by doing HRT, nutrient-dense diet, movement, exercise, all different types of things. I went from not being able to remember my phone number to taking university courses and getting the highest grade in the class. So it really made a huge change to my health transformed myself, used all the levers that you have for health and healing. But it's really um, a passion of mine to help women recover their brain health. And I've updated a section in here on brain health in 2022, reconfirming the value of HRT, strongly reconfirming, reconfirming the value of nutrients and the problems associated with taking many medicines in our environment. So I'm going to go ahead and make this video all about the update to the brain health section in my guide. And I'm hoping that this really helps push you along towards recovery. I'm hoping that you can do this just from this video. You can pursue other elements that are adding to your brain health safely, non-toxic things that you can do that'll make a difference in brain chemistry. So let's talk about the reversal of Alzheimer's. If you've read my initial appointment guide, you know that Japanese researchers are stopping the progression of Alzheimer's of women in their 70s and 80s with two milligrams of 0.1% estradiol. We know how powerful that is. But there's another element being explored by Roberta Diaz-Brenton, the 2015 Alzheimer's Research Scientist of the Year, and her group at the University of Arizona. And they are looking into a chemistry, a natural bioidentical hormone called allopregnenolone. And my information is they are in phase two clinical trials now. So they've proven that allopregnenolone will enhance the brain cells. So brain cells, you can't get new ones, but the structure of it is really enhanced by allopregnenolone. So it gets stronger, your brain cells get stronger and they don't die as quickly. And so you don't get Alzheimer's and dementia. So they are looking, trying to look for allopregnenolone as an Alzheimer's reversal. They have stopped using the CIRMS, the fake estradiol. They have stopped using that in their trials. And that tells you right there that my information on CIRMS being a problem is absolutely correct. They were having side effects by using CIRMS and they were not getting the same type of response that you're gonna get from estradiol. So. What's lucky for us is pregnenolone is an over-the-counter product that we can use for about $12 a month, and it converts to allopregnenolone in our brain. I've been using it since 2016 when I kind of had a health crash because they reduced my estradiol level, and that caused a little bit of a health disruption for me. So I added in, at that time, I added in the pregnenolone and I felt a difference. It works in so many dimensions, but you feel it in the brain. You will feel it on mood. You will feel it on pain. I have an entire page, one pager for you on pregnenolone and all the functions. But we're talking about brain health today, so I have to mention that, that it is in phase two clinical trial. But you have access today. It's over the counter. You can get this. I will mention that I am watching carefully the issue of progesterone daily versus cyclic 
progesterone, only having 12 days a month on progesterone, or only having um, 20 days every three months on progesterone to manage the uterine lining. So this is an issue that's being brought up because what we found was estradiol and testosterone are both working to stop your brain from putting down these proteins called amyloid beta plaques that we find in Alzheimer's. These are proteins that need to get cleaned up. But the amount of amyloid beta you have directly relates to the amount of dementia you have. So you want to avoid those amyloid beta proteins. And so you've got estradiol and testosterone working on that. But there's some type of effect of progesterone on that process that actually slows that down a little bit. So this is something that I just want to make you aware of. It's up in the air. I have heard nothing from the International Menopause Society on it. I think we're going to hear more about this coming in the future because we want to enhance that brain health, right? We have a huge population of women that are living long, long lives. Who wants to have dementia for the last decade? Nobody, nobody, and especially your children. Your children do not want this for you. No. I added a special section on melatonin because there's a whole bunch of information that's brand new on this. So melatonin is a hormone that you produce naturally, and it's a supplement that you can get over the counter. And most of us are using it postmenopausally because sleep onset is super impaired. No matter how much sleep hygiene we do, we really still need help with that. And it's normal. I mean, it's a part of aging. Men need it too. But what we're finding is that melatonin is actually helping with all those circadian changes. And we found a situation where if we inject the Alzheimer's protein into the brain, we know that melatonin protects from any of the damage that that amyloid protein makes, right? So melatonin is playing a neuroprotective role for you. I want to make sure that you don't feel guilty about using this hormone. Use it. You need to help your brain. We're just not designed to live without our brain cells. In this modern society, can you imagine not having a coherent uh, skills, not having skills to get around, not having skills to live independently? Oh my gosh, let's not go there, okay? So we know so much more about melatonin. It has a very high safety profile. And usually um, you don't need more than six milligrams nightly. And um, it will only help with sleep onset. It will not keep you asleep. But it's neuroprotective. So get with it. It's going to be great for you. I added a paragraph on avoiding hospitalization. And I have a list of drugs that I'll put on a slide here that you can avoid. And these are common drugs. And what what they're finding is they're doing um, an analysis of medical records on people. And so they analyze the drugs that they have been taking for their, in their 40s, 50s, and 60s. And then if they get dementia, if they have higher rates of dementia correlated with that drug, then we know that that drug is causing problems. So I, I want you to avoid hospitalization at all costs, at all costs. It, please change your diet to reduce your pain. Do not go into the hospital to get that knee replacement surgery. Work on diet and movement and physical therapy, and you will avoid that knee surgery. You will avoid that hip surgery, and you will avoid the drugs that hurt your brain. Hospitalization is very, very dangerous, and that's just the drugs then you add on the medical errors and you are in so much trouble. Please stay out of the hospital, please. I've been doing some special research on a condition called ataxia. And the main element of that is that you have balance issues, right? So your gait is impaired. 
you have movement issues, right? Um, but there are 20 other things related to it because it, the core of it is cerebellum shrinkage. So that entire big chunk at the end, let's see if I've got it. <clears throat> so this green part, that whole area, that's actually 50% of your brain cells are right there. So that's the cerebellum. And so cerebellum shrinkage is the common theme. And these are core elements of integration of brain activity, a lot of integration. So you're gonna have pathways that go through the cerebellum that all get impaired. And you don't want this thing. So how, does, how do you get this cerebellum shrinkage? Well, there's themes. The number one thing is you have a genetic problem with absorbing specific nutrients. So it might be a B6 or a B9 issue or a vitamin E issue is common. So you might have to really dose up on those types of nutrients in your food in order to get those nutrients into your body. This is where AIP can really make a big, big difference. The other reason that it shrinks is alcoholism because alcoholism <clears throat> flushes your body from nutrients. It takes the nutrients right out of your body. Alcoholism flushes the nutrients out of your body. It is so bad for you. And postmenopausally, your liver doesn't work very well and it does not clear out the alcohol. And you can feel this. You can feel this. You know this. So this is a part of what you're trying to protect is the cerebellum, right? Because you're going to lose. You're going to lose your personality. That is the worst thing is that you go dead behind the eyes. This is scary. And I want to scare you because I don't want you to have this. This is really another form of brain damage that happens basically because of nutrient loss. You're going to have to work on the metabolic health of the cells that remain behind. That's how you battle this if you have the gene that says these proteins accumulate. You don't have the genes that clean up the trash proteins in the brain. So, But nutrients is an issue. The other issue can be an autoimmune attack on this particular piece of the body. So if you don't have a healthy, strong immune system and or you have some, some autoimmune genes, once again, you're going to end up with an attack on this particular part of the brain. And like I said, it's like a, it's like a inter exchange for lots of pathways are going through this area. So this gets impaired and you have so many things going wrong in your life. It's not just Alzheimer's memory issues, which is just one particular area. This is like a an interstate for you. And it's like clogging it up full of trucks. I mean, it's just not going to work. So this thing called ataxia can happen. The AIP diet, once again, is going to help you battle this and hopefully win the battle, stay independent, not have this issue in your life. I have a paragraph on lithium. So lithium is an element. It's a nutrient, right? And it varies a lot in our vegetables based on the level of that nutrient in our soil. So it's really hard to predict where you're going to get some lithium. One place you really can get it, and you can get it in a really nice chunk, is in liver. So I put a paragraph in on this and I explored lithium a little bit more, it is neuroprotective and neurogenerative. So it's gonna protect you from toxins and things that are happening to your brain cells, right? It's gonna do that, but it's also going to help you grow the shape of those brain cells so they work even better. So if you do lose some brain cells to aging or to do some kind of disease, this lithium can be a very nice element. It is also pharmaceutical. So once again, you can get to psychiatry. A lot of people are trying a low dose of 10 to 20 milligrams. This is similar to what you're going to get in liver five days a week. You're going to get some brain enhancement. And I have to say, I can feel the difference in a month 
where I, I take a month off from liver, I can feel a difference. I can feel a difference. It's just so, such a powerhouse, right? So once again, this is supporting um, the nutrient flow. The brain is an energy hog. It uses 20% of our calories. I think it's just, uh, I don't know how much of our nutrients it's using. It's crazy. But the fact that you can't regenerate it means we keep those brain cells healthy. That's our goal. That's how we stay well. Metformin. Now I'll just say, this is one drug I hear really good things about. And people in the anti-aging communities are leaning heavily into metformin, even if they do not have diabetes or preclinical diabetes, right? So it is one of those medicines that seems to be working well on a pathway. It's not like throwing a wrench in your body. It's enhancing something. So it's keeping your blood sugar low and even. And that is part of brain health. And the autoimmune protocol diet does this, right? You put in protein, fat, and carb into every single meal when you combine them all. It will even everything out and you're taking out types of foods that make your blood sugar go up and down, right? You're taking those out. So it has a similar kind of anti-inflammatory effect. And so that's very helpful. And lastly, a couple things that will help your estradiol work in your brain. We know that low levels of magnesium in our bloodstream is going to make your estradiol not work as well. It's just, it's a protective factor that the magnesium and the estradiol together are protective on your brain cells. So that's really important. The other thing is high stress, right? High stress is creating cortisol in your body and that is going to compete on your receptors for your HRT. So managing your stress. So there's quite a few things I have non-toxic ways to manage stress. And so, of course, meditation and yoga and simplifying your life, there are just a million things that you can do on this, right? So just keep in mind, coaching does focus on stress and helping you create coping skills similar to counseling. Counseling, of course, helps you on stress, right? So um, keep in mind stress and stress management is protected, protective for your brain. Lack of nutrients will eliminate the high impact of HRT on your brain. So this is something that all of us are missing that education on what a high nutrient food is. You can see my videos on nutrition that I have here. I have a playlist on nutrition and I'll put that in the YouTube description so that you can link out to that easily. But nutrients will always play a role in your HRT and how it works. Another key element is going to be zinc. And this is something you want to probably figure out. You get a very high load in things like liver and oysters. You know, a lot of the seafoods will help you with zinc. And zinc is a component of the receptor, the receptor that's sitting there waiting for your HRT. So that, that's a nutrient element that you really can't do without. You won't have a good response to HRT without enough zinc. The other thing that's quite key is proteins. So you need a certain amount of protein every day. Fish and seafood are highly digestible proteins. It's a special kind of protein because fish don't have to deal with gravity. It's easy to digest. Um, and it makes available a lot of nutrients. So you want to make sure, especially for the testosterone, this will be a key in figuring out whether or not your testosterone is working, is getting making sure you have high enough proteins each and every single day because the proteins actually bind with the testosterone and carry it around your body. So there's little pointers like that that are in my initial HRT appointment guide. And that's the brain update. I, I dig into this every few months and 
it's always fascinating to me. I find more and more about what I'm doing and how it impacts my brain. So that I have a lot of explanations now for my particular brain experience, my health. And it's working. It's working. It's working. And I hope it works for you, too. Anyway, good to see you. Please share these videos.